Today's Agri Minute goes out to all the combine operators out there. As you're working to get your combines calibrated and produce good maps for the mapping season when we go through all this data, be on the lookout for wild swings within the yield that maybe aren't represented by soil type or conditions out there when you see the yields drop in an area and continue to drop in that area as you pass through. My recommendation is that's the time to stop while we have evidence to work with. Jump out and take a look at that crop, look at it in the good area that the combine's showing you, and then look at it in the poor area, maybe drop some pins, make some notes to help us when we're trying to diagnose what's going on. And in soybeans, one of the first things you would do is get out and see if the stand is missing. Like in this case here, we don't have any soybeans to harvest. Now, typically when we don't have the stand, we're gonna have weed pressure. So instead of just blaming it on the herbicide failure, we're gonna look at, do we have a stand? And if the stand is missing or very light, you'd make note of that and stretch your tape out, do a count, find out how many plants you have in that area compared to the good area. If there's evidence, a lot of times when we're talking about stand, that would be emergence and disease issues early in the season, so the evidence would be gone. But if there's evidence to where the stand went, as we look here, the amount of holes in the ground, we know we have a colony in this case of 13 line ground squirrels or bulls that are taking the stand out. That's a lot different managing a varmint problem uh, than, for instance, uh, a seed treatment for a fungicide or insecticide or something like that. So first step, is the stand there. Uh, then you're gonna look at how well that plant's doing. After we've identified how good the stand is or isn't, then we look at the pod set. How good's the pod set? And as we can see in these plants, very poor pod set, nodes quite a ways apart, and one to two pods per each node. That tells us that this plant was stressed in the R1, R2 phase. And you can think about your weather then, and you can think about your herbicide application. But the most important thing for combine operator to note that these beans in this area are potted very poor. Maybe whip out your cell phone and take a picture of it at the same time and compare that to a picture of the good yielding ones. But that tells us early season flowering stress. We First we set the flowers, then we're going to set the pod size. So as we move into R2 and R3, if there's stress out here, you're going to see more of the two bean pods as we do on this plant. A lot of two bean pods in here kind of tell you where that stress is. And again, if it's gonna be at the bottom of the plant, it was earlier. If it's gonna be at the top of the plant, it's gonna be later in that scenario. But it tells you that that stress continued on into R2, R3 in that situation. Now, if the pod set looks good, got a lot of good clusters on there, got a lot of three bean, four bean pods, but we're still yielding low, then you're gonna look for those flat spots in the pods. In a situation like this bean, it's got a lot of good pod set, but there's a lot of flat spots in these pods that didn't develop into soybeans. And again, that's gonna tell us that this had a later stress in that R4, R4 and a half to up to R5, where it set the pod, set the number of beans in the pod, and then it aborted that bean. So it gets far enough along, it doesn't abort the pod, but it will abort the bean in that pod, and then we have these flat spots. So that tells us, again, it's later on in that season where that stress took place. And then your managers can look back at what is the stress that hit us in that R4, R4 and a half range? Was it weather? Was it a respray? What, what happened out here from that perspective? Now you can also look for disease at this time. Again, taking pictures of the plant probably helps. So we can look at anthracnose and pod and stem. Uh, later on, we can look back and say, well, those beans in the poor area had a lot of anthracnose on them compared to uh, the ones in the good area. But noting again that, yeah, the beans are here, the population's here, the pod set's good. There's just a lot of missing beans. The other area to check for this yield loss is in the size of the bean. So let's say you got a lot of pods, you got the stand there, you got a lot of three bean, four bean pods, but when you shell them out, you realize there's a huge difference in the low yielding area in seed quality, seed size, compared to the higher yielding area. And that gives you an idea that this stress, when we see small beans, is gonna be a stress that's in that R5 to R6 and a half range. It's gonna be at the very end of the season. So that could be, again, a drought that uh, hung on and it caught these beans before they got done. So it might be related to soil type. It could be related to disease that killed the plant prematurely. But 
if we note that everything looked the same, these cut like 75 bushel beans, but they yielded 60 on the monitor, and it was all in bean size, then your managers will know that the problem lays in the end of this season, so they can look at any stress that um, maybe that crop took on, again, from that R5.5 to R6.5 range in its maturity.